The Lord be with you. My name is Bromley McLennigan, and I am one of the pastors here at Union Church. It is wonderful to be in worship here with you today. We have a lot to do and a lot to talk about. We're continuing in our summer series called Dragons and Disciples and Stories of Risk and Resilience. And we are learning from different folk tales and from stories that Jesus told to his friends about how we can live in the world, how we can understand what's going on around us, and how we can do good, how we can make a difference. We are going to come together in prayer in a minute, and then we'll sing together. We'll pray some more and sing some more, and then we'll hear a couple different stories. Our Bible story today is broken into two parts. The first part, Jesus is talking about what goes into our bodies, what we eat, and what comes out of our bodies, what we say and do. And then the second part of the story is of a woman who comes to Jesus and asks for his help. And at first, he says, no, that is unexpected. But she keeps asking. And that reminded me of the folk tale uh, called The Boy Who Cried Wolf. Now, that's a fun story, but we also have uh, with us today a version of that story called Wolf, Wolf, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. But before we do all of that, let's come together in worship. I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can uh, read along with the prayer if you are someone who reads. And uh, if you are not someone who reads yet, that is okay. Your line repeats each time. It is this. We show that we are worthy of trust. Do you know what trust is? In some ways, trust is another word for faith. We show people that they can depend on us, that we are someone who will tell the truth and uh, we can be relied on and we can be, I'm going to do that thing where you use the word that you're defining to define it, uh, which is a big no-no when you get to English class later on. But we show that uh, people can uh, share their lives with us too, that we won't uh, treat them badly if they open up or make themselves vulnerable. So, your line, again, we show that we are worthy of trust. Are you ready? When we listen to others' needs, when we care about others' lives, when we tell the truth, when we live in love, 
When we do all of those things, we show that we are worthy of people's trust and that they can put their faith in us just as we put our trust and faith in God. We ask uh, in this time, God, to show us what is true and to help us to listen and understand and to help us live as people who are trustworthy. So we're going to sing our opening song, Open Our Eyes. Good morning, everyone. Please join me in singing Open My Eyes to See. I'll sing the first chorus through one time, and then you can join me. We'll lift our voices in harmony together. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Open my life to live your calling. Open me, Lord, to love. Open my eyes to see. Open my open my ears to hear. Open my life. Open my life to live your calling. Open me, Lord, to love. Open my open my eyes to see. Open my eyes to see, open my ears to hear, open my life to live your calling, open me, Lord, to love. We hear the song and we'll hear the story in a few minutes and it reminds us that sometimes we are not always thinking about others and i think that's a hard thing and something we need to practice being good to ourselves but also being just as good if not even a little bit better to others loving our neighbors is how we put it in church sometimes i'm going to invite you to pray with me then, asking God to help us to be as caring and loving as we can. If you are someone who reads, please do read the prayer alongside me. And if you are not someone who reads yet, will you pray with your ears and your heart open and then join us at the end by saying amen? All right, let's pray. Dear God, we care about ourselves and our well-being. Nothing wrong with that. But sometimes we forget that we need to care about others just as much. Help us to be caring and loving and do what's good for others and not just what we want. Amen. Now, God promises to love us always. And God knows our hearts when they are crabby or mean and when they are loving and full of joy. God knows us and loves us always. And there is nothing, nothing that can ever separate us from God's love. That is a wonderful thing. That kind of love gives us the strength and the courage to do good things and to be joyful. And so we celebrate that. We celebrate God's love and we try to share it with others. The words we use in church are, the peace of Christ be with you. I think you should, uh, if you will, please greet others near to you at your house with signs of God's peace and love. And maybe you'll even want to take a minute to text a friend or a grandparent or somebody else to let them know that you are thinking of them right now. Now let's join in singing our hallelujah.
we read our Bible story or the first part of our Bible story, I wanted to share a game with you that made me, or the Bible story made me think of this game. It's called Feed the Woozle. And it is a really fun game that we have at our house. Uh, it's by Peaceable Kingdom, and so a lot of their games don't, uh, you don't sort of compete against each other. We're all on the same team, hey Hattie, in uh, a game like this. And so the goal in Feed the Woozle is to feed this woozle. You see, I mean, it looks kind of like a monster. But what kinds of foods, Hats, does uh, the woozle like to eat? Disgusting. Disgusting things. Like, let's see. What are some of the things? It comes with all these different Ew, ones. Fish. That one says sugar coated sardines. Disgusting. Yeah. This one says booger chili. Ew. Ew. Soggy sausage. Toenail toast. <laughs> Ew! A fishy cupcake? Ew! Bath water soda? Are you supposed to drink the water from the bath? No. No, it could make you sick, right? Let's see. And then, what's some other ones that are, oh, chocolate covered flies? Ew! That sounds like something maybe John the Baptist would eat. Who's John the Baptist? Jesus' cousin. I don't know, though. He liked locusts. Flies are kind of gross, though. A muddy meatball? Would you eat a meatball after it fell in a mud puddle? No. No. I don't even like... <laughs> so, what are you... Can you... Yeah. What's that one? A hairy donut. A hairy donut? Oh, here. How about this one? Frog leg ice cream. Yeah. So, Hattie, how do you play Feed the Weasel? What are you supposed to do? Do you remember? No. All right. Why don't we show them? You show them. So it comes with a spinner, and yeah. you, you spin the thing. You either have to mm -hmm. go backwards, spin, go in a parade, dance, bunny hop. And the goal of everybody is to, uh, and you I, have to. I don't know what the red thing. Go crazy. Yeah, go crazy. So yeah. you put the food on this spoon, and then the woozle is like far across the room, and you have to and this balance. Does, and this it does what? How? How much the woozle has to eat? Right. So you can put one food or two, two foods food. or three foods, yeah. and you try to get all of those uh, things inside the woozle's mouth. And what makes it hard is that, you know, sometimes you're bunny hopping and you got to keep the things on the spoon. Sometimes you're walking backwards. Sometimes you're marching. And uh, I don't know. Do you think uh, those kinds of foods make the woozle's tummy feel good? Yes. Yeah. I just want to play that game. Well, you know what? We can play in just a minute. But uh, what we are what going are to do. About? Well, I'm going to tell you why I'm talking about the woozle right now. So I was reminded of the woozle who eats all kinds of gross things because Jesus was talking with some people and, uh, and he pulled the crowd to them. He called to them and he said, listen and understand. It's not what goes into the mouth that makes a person sick or dirty or gross or whatever. It's what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Now, what comes out of your mouth? Gross. No, not, not like gross things usually. What, what, what usually comes out of your mouth? Teeth. Air. Well, your teeth, you, yeah, teeth can come out. What, uh, what's coming out of my mouth right now? Air and words, right? Words are coming out of my mouth. 
And yours too. Yeah. So Jesus is telling people that it's not what goes into your mouth that makes such a big difference. That's not what determines what kind of person you are or how people treat you or understand you. It's what you say. It's what comes out of your mouth that matters. And then uh, some of his disciples said, now listen, some of the people in this town are going to be upset about you talking like this because they have very strict rules about what people should eat and how they should wash their hands and how they should get ready to eat. And they're going to be upset with you to say that none of that stuff matters. And Jesus says, well, they don't really know what they're doing. They're like the blind leading the blind. Now, do you know what that means? Do you know what it means to be blind? Do you know what it means to be blind? You can't see, right? So if you can't see, now actual people who are blind are amazing because there are all kinds of strategies that they have to be independent and to find their way around. But uh, if someone was blind for the first time or was just pretending and was just closing their eyes, and they were trying to find their way around, do you think they'd have an easy time? No. no, they might trip over something, or if they didn't really know about their landscape, then uh, you know maybe it could be dangerous. And so if they needed somebody to guide them, are you being blind walking around? If they needed somebody to guide them, you would want somebody who could see, right? But if you had two people who couldn't see and weren't used to seeing, do you think they'd be able to find their way very well? No. So Jesus is saying, you know what? You don't need to listen to these guys right now because none of them understand. And so they can't help you because they don't understand themselves. Now, there's a second part of the story that uh, is this week from uh, our Growing in God's Love book. And, oh man, I lost the page. Let's see. Here we go. A Canaanite woman does not give up. There aren't that many pictures in this one, but there it is. A Canaanite woman is a woman who came from Cana, um, or Canaan. And, uh, and so that was um, a part of the country that was, was sort of separate from where uh, Jesus and his friends lived. And um, in the ways that sometimes we are not always very friendly or welcoming to uh, folks who come from other places. I mean, we are friendly, but every now and again, people are not friendly to folks from other places. And of course they should be, but they're not always. Um, and, uh, and Jesus and his friends, yeah, we're not always. Well, she was, yeah, from Chicago. So here is the story about the Canaanite woman. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, listen. Have you ever wanted something so badly that you did not give up? In this story, a Canaanite woman, whose name we don't know, was determined that Jesus could make her daughter well. And she did not give up until Jesus helped her. Jesus left Galilee and traveled with his friends to Canaan. He hoped to get some rest, but people found him there too and needed his help. A woman shouted at Jesus, Lord, listen to me. Something is terrible. Something terrible is happening to my daughter. She is very sick. You can make her better. But do you know what Jesus did? He didn't say anything. Jesus' friend said, that woman is so loud. She is really bothering us. Get rid of her. Ooh, how, mean. how mean, right? Very rude. But Jesus did not send her away. He said to the woman, I was sent to help the Israelite people. They are like lost sheep. The woman was not an Israelite, but she would not leave. She got down on her knees before Jesus and she said, Lord, please help my daughter. It is not right for me to help you, Jesus said. I cannot give the food of children to dogs. That is also pretty rude. This story is kind of hard because Jesus is not at his best in this story. And Jesus is always the best. And Jesus is always the best. So what is going on? 
with him seriously. But even though he was kind of rude to her, the woman would not let go. She said, listen, dogs need food too. They eat the crumbs that fall from the people's tables. Now, what is amazing here is that even though Jesus said, you don't deserve what I am here to bring, the healing and the helping and the God's love, even though it's for other people, not for you. Jesus sees this one in this picture. So even though that she was like, no, listen, I still deserve something. And my child deserves your help. And Jesus was amazed. Jesus was amazed that she kept after him and was amazed that she trusted him. You did not give up on me when I said no. You should have what you need. And at that moment, the woman's daughter was made well. The mother did not give up. Do you have uh, any idea why Jesus might not have helped the woman at first? Why? I don't know. I mean, maybe he thought he was very busy and he only had so much time. And maybe he thought there were other people who needed his help more. I don't know. And that might well have been true, but like his primary job description was to help the people of Israel. But she, but even though it might not be at the top of your to-do list, if someone really needs your help, you know, maybe you need to set your your to-do list aside for a minute and do what you can. And what made him change his mind? Do you remember? That she asked so many this times, I think. Good, but it's not asked. Yeah, that one does look good, except it's not. It's a log Sunday. Yeah. So I was thinking about that story, and I was thinking about the boy who cried wolf. And we're going to read this version of the boy who cried wolf. And the boy who cried wolf is about a little boy who says the same thing over and over again. But what he says isn't true. And you'll find out what happens. Yeah, he does. He lies. And he's kind of playing a game. But nevertheless, because he's lying, the people don't trust him as much. But this story tells, uh, this book tells the story of Wolf, of the boy who cried Wolf, from the perspective of the wolf. And I love the pictures. And it's set uh, in China, I think. China, what's China? What's China? Yeah, China is a place. It's a country. The hungry old wolf was too slow to snatch birds and too stiff to chase rabbits. So he tried growing food in a small garden. Bah! Weeds everywhere. There are so many I can't even find the vegetables. The old wolf growled, rubbing his empty stomach. As he yanked dandelions from where his carrots should have been, his ears began to twitch. <gasps> wolf! Wolf! The old wolf fumbled with his hearing aid. This is my favorite. That's his hearing aid. Because it's like a big cone and it pulls the sound in and puts it in his ear. It's like old fashioned. The old wolf fumbled. Who's calling me? I don't remember having any friends on this mountain. In fact, the old wolf didn't have any friends on any mountain. Maybe they have some food to share. A mere morsel would do, he said. His bones creaked and his joints cracked as he slowly made his way toward the voice. There he is walking. Or maybe it's Japan, because here's cherry blossoms, and those are kind of famous in Japan. After a tiring climb and two stubbed toes, the old wolf came to a clearing. What's this? A boy? With goats? The old wolf drooled with excitement. Surely he can spare one for a hungry wolf. But before he could step into the meadow, a group of villagers came clambering up the hillside. Do you see them running? Do you 
see the boy with his goat? There they are. Villagers are people who live in a village. Like if you live in the village of Hinsdale, you're a villager. Villagers? Oh. oh, yeah, we play a game that has villagers in it. The old wolf stayed hidden behind the bamboo as the villagers surrounded the boy. Where's the wolf? A villager cried out, waving a stick. Did he take any goats? Another gasped. What wolf? The boy giggled. There is no wolf. <gasps> Did he tell the truth? Oh. No. The people are upset. We ran up this hill for nothing, the eldest wheezed. Call us only if you see a wolf, scolded another. The old wolf wasn't fond of angry villagers, especially ones with sticks, so he limped down to a nearby stream. Kids, humph, always playing tricks on old folks and old wolves. He groaned as he soaked his tired feet. Before long. Don't tell the ending yet. <laughs> it's okay. Before long, the wolf's cry came again. Wolf, wolf, I'm not upset, honey. It's okay. The wolf's, the wolf is taking the goats. Then he's upset. Another wolf is taking those tasty goats? The old wolf couldn't stand the thought and quickly hobbled back to the meadow. He didn't want that. He didn't want to share with another wolf. <gasps> The villagers were already there, huffing and puffing from running up the hill. Where is the wolf? Are the goats okay? The villagers gasped. What wolf? The boy laughed. From behind a tree, the old wolf watched the villagers stagger back down the hill. There's got to be a way to get one of those scrumptious goats from that trickster, he thought. Maybe a trick of my own. Do you remember what the trick is that the wolf plays? What? The old wolf sat down to work out a plan and was soon snoring away and dreaming of mooshu goat and double goat dumplings. Wolf, wolf, the boy yelled out again. Ugh, I can't even enjoy the goats in my dreams. That boy is worse than weeds, the old wolf growled. He stretched his aching legs and went to the meadow once more. Perfect, not a villager in sight. The old wolf slowly crept out toward the boy. The goat swiftly scattered to the far edge of the meadow. Were you calling me over for lunch? The old wolf grinned. Wolf, wolf, there is a wolf, the boy cried as he scrambled up a tree. Do you think the people believed him? Yeah. No, why not? Because he kept lying and now he's in trouble, or he's stuck at any rate. Quit your yelling, said the wolf. Is that the guy in the tree? That's the little boy, yeah. Those villagers won't believe you anyway. But this time it's true, they have to believe me. You're a real wolf and you're going to take the goats. Now, the old wolf knew that his legs were too tired to chase down goats. So he carefully lowered himself onto a nearby rock and gazed up at the boy. His lips curled in a smile. The villagers are only going to believe you if you really are missing a goat. Now I can help you with that, he grinned. Just oh. one goat? The boy leaned forward on the bench branch. I'm a picky eater. The plump one looks about right, but you have to bring it to me because if I go over there, I might change my mind and grab them all. Bring it to you, the boy asked. Oh, on the, he's gonna eat the boy. I don't think he's going to eat the boy. He just wants to eat a goat. On the other side of the mountain, the old wolf said, you'll find a small garden. Just tie it to the fence post there. And he started home. The next morning, the old wolf was overjoyed to see the plump goat. 
Um, my phone. Nibbling away in his garden. Good fortune at last, he said. Today I'll feast like an old wolf should. He rubbed his paws together. The wolf's mouth watered and his stomach grumbled as he crept up behind the goat. Uh-oh, is that the end of the goat? Don't worry. Then he noticed something remarkable. <gasps> He's not eating the vegetables. Everywhere he looked, there were ripe and juicy vegetables, baby bok choy, beautiful eggplant. That's right, ready to eat, pick carrots and even his favorite onions. The old wolf couldn't believe his eyes. Then he saw the goat happily eating the last few weeds. She saw him too and froze in fear. You ate my weeds, the old wolf said, but why didn't you eat the vegetables? Sorry, I'm a picky eater, she said. Please don't eat me. The wolf looked at the plump goat and then at all the juicy vegetables and back at the goat again. He sighed. I guess it was so don't worry, you did my work for me. What's one breakfast compared to delicious vegetables for the rest of my days? The wolf smiled as he untied the goat. I could use a friend like you. The end. Nice. I love that story because it starts with a hungry wolf who can't get what he needs. It has a boy in it who is not being very kind to the villagers, right? And by telling lies, he's actually putting himself and the goats in danger, right? I love that story because I love how clever the wolf is when the boy... I love the and you like the ending about the vegetables. I love that too. Because where before it seemed like everybody was against each other, ah, everybody was against each other. Instead, they got what they needed. Everybody got what they needed. The boy got the villagers' trust back. The wolf got some juicy vegetables. And the goat got a happy life eating weeds and a new friend. So there's a lot of reasons I like that story and why it makes me think a little bit of the story of Jesus and the Canaanite woman. I know I'm always talking about church things. <laughs> so, boring. so boring. Well, listen, you came out here. Well, I hope that you will do some thinking about the stories you tell and whether or not people can trust you. Do you cry wolf, wolf, when there aren't any wolves? I hope I to. I've seen a deer before. <laughs> You've seen life. a deer? Yeah, we don't have very many wolves around here. Um, when they settle into life. Yeah. Remember that when we were going to a tree house? I do remember that. There was a deer on the road. But it wasn't actually a real tree because it was just a Right. It was only a tree sticking out. Right. And it's very high up. Yep. She's talking about when we went on a trip. So, but when I want you to think about then how but you still. tell the truth. Hold on, let me finish real quick. We, I want you to think about telling the truth. And then I want you to think too about how you can be clever in when somebody says no or somebody does something that's unfair, how can you help? Do you have to think of a new plan or a new idea of how to help? Let's have a word of prayer. Good and loving God, you gave us big hearts for loving, and you gave us smart heads for thinking of new ways to help others. We pray that you will help us to use the gifts you've given us to do your work in the world, to share your love with everyone we meet. Now I want to spill it. Now we're going to share our gifts and offerings. You can do that by going to the church website or by 
the instructions for that are in the um, description of this video, or you can always mail a check to the Church of Hoffman. And then we're going to sing our doxology and pray together. If you can read, will you read along? And if you don't read yet, will you pray with your ears and hearts open and join us at the end by saying amen? Dear God, we give you thanks for all the ways you have shared your love with us. We pray that you will bless the gifts that we bring today so that they might do your work of truth telling in the world. Amen. Amen. Now, did you know that you have a little light inside you? Are you looking for it? It is not a physical light. It is like a light of an idea. The light of love. Kind of like a light bulb. The light of love. And so I want you to let your light shine. into the world this day. Friends, go in the name of the God who made you. Go in the name of the God in Jesus who loves you and who hears, stop that, who hears uh, our prayers and who hears the questions and needs of the world and responds. Go in the name of God in the Holy Spirit, that little light inside of you to show God's love and light to all the world. Amen. Amen.